many of you ask me about my skin and hair routine and instead of just uh, talking about what I do um, I'm gonna explain a bit more uh, about the rationale behind it so let's begin with skin good skin is skin that is hydrated and smooth in order to achieve this you need to maintain proper hydration in your body this doesn't simply mean drinking lots of water but it means more like maintaining the correct electrolyte balance in your body so in this way your skin will be supplied with water from inside and that's the most important part secondly water comes from the outside for example uh, the humidity in the air um, this is why our skin is so dry in the winter because outside we have cold and humid air we take it inside and heat it up and suddenly the relative humidity of the air is very low and moisture is pulled out from our skin so we can compensate for this by using a humidifier in the room or by for example air drying our laundry in the room um, this will supply more water to the air and will prevent our skin from becoming too dry and similarly in summer um, many times the AC units just make the air inside very dry and finally it's important to lock in the moisture um, in our skin um, this is what our body does naturally by producing sebum which is the oil that covers our skin and prevents the water um, from evaporating too quickly from the skin but also moisturizers do this um, let's have a look at what moisturizers actually do uh, to begin with they contain water as I said the water content is very important in your skin um, having skin that is hydrated uh, means that your skin will shed the dead, uh, the dead cells of the outer layer uh, at a regular pace um, making it more smooth but also um, moisturizers contain occlusives which are oily substances that prevent your moisture from evaporating for example Vaseline is obviously like a greasy substance and the only purpose that it has is to prevent moisture from evaporating moisturizers also contain humectants for example glycerin and honey are substances that pull moisture from within your skin from the lower layers and finally they have other ingredients like emollients that make your skin smoother or uh, vitamins like vitamin A and B5 that are included not so much for the nutritional properties but more for their physical properties so they act as humectants so dry skin isn't skin that lacks oil it's skin that lacks water for example, kids don't produce sebum, which is the oil on your skin, and yet the skin is very smooth. People start producing sebum only during the teenage years, and this is why, typically, that's when people start getting pimples, because pimples are just a buildup of sebum under the dead skin cells. Obviously, this means that is the production of sebum is mainly hormone-regulated, rather than environmental, so it doesn't really depend on what we eat, or not to a great extent. But what we can control is how we shed the dead skin cells from our, uh, from our outer layer of skin. And this is what I just said so far, is that it's important to maintain correct hydration of your skin. So from the outside, from within, and by locking in, it, in the moisture. People have the misconception that scrubbing away, um, washing with like, soap so, much, so often, actually will remove this dead uh, skin and hence prevent pimples but is actually the contrary because by doing so you're really uh, eliminating the sebum which is your natural uh, layer of protection uh, to lock in the moisture and you're making your skin dry. So on a more practical level um, I usually uh, shower twice a day because of my intense workout regime and that means that using soap each time will be detrimental for my skin. Um, also really hot water uh, is not really good because it washes off um, your oil from the skin and also wearing clothes that are too tight so what I normally do is I use like a mild soap or a detergent uh, soap free detergent um, every two showers which for me means essentially every 36 hours or every th three after three workouts and when I do I tend to moisturize after having used the detergent or I use detergents that already include moisturizer uh, or oils so that the moisture can be locked in and usually it's good to moisturize after you have showered or after you've taken a bath because as I explained before 
one of the purposes of moisturizers is to lock in the moisture. So if your skin has already water inside, the moisturizers will help more. We talked about skin, let's talk about the hair, which actually works in a very similar way to skin. Your hair is made up of dead cells, just like for your skin, and sebum is produced at your hair follicles, so it's the same oily substance that covers your hair and has the purpose of uh, weatherproofing the hair and uh, lubricating. So the rate at which you build up sebum, uh, the, so the rate at which your hair becomes greasy, uh, actually determines uh, how often you should shampoo, which is the most common debate, how often should anyone shampoo. So generally speaking, people with thicker hair um, build up grease sl at a slower pace. So you, shampooing every three, four days could be sufficient. Um, people with thinner hair need to shampoo more often, so every other day. But the fact that um, this oily substance uh, covers your hair uh, and prevents moisture from leaving their hair, just like for your skin, also means that you have to be careful because if you shampoo too often, you are eliminating this substance, which is your natural protection, and your hair will become more dry and uh, break as a consequence of that. So on a practical level, um, like I said before, because I have to shower very often um, due to my workout regime, so like that's twice a day at least, I usually rely on warm water um, to clean my skin and to wash my hair. I usually shampoo every five days. I use a mild shampoo, like a very nourishing shampoo. And after, uh, because I rinsed off all this oily protection, I need to replenish it with um, a hair oil. So some of, some of those products that you put on your hair before you dry it, so that you lock in the moisture.